Hi guys, welcome. And who that? I'm Joe. Welcome to my channel, Rosenfield 10. This will be the season in review for our beloved Bless You Boys in black and gold, the New Orleans Saints. We have wrapped up the 2023 regular season. Saints finished 9 and 8. And we missed the playoffs. We missed the playoffs because we don't get enough help. And that is where the disappointment for this team lies. You're really one win away from not having to worry about that stuff. You could win out. You could go to the playoffs. You could be in control of your destiny. But instead, you finish 9-8. and eight. You're tied with the Packers. You lost to them head-to-head, -head, so they get to go to the playoffs instead of you. That's basically what, what it boils down to. Just one more win. In this messed up season. And you would have clinched your division with a better record than everybody else. You would have secured a playoff spot. And right now you'd be preparing to host the Philadelphia Eagles. But come up one game short. So 9-8, and eight, that is the best record Dennis Allen has ever had as a head coach. And 9-8 and eight is where we were at in Sean Payton's last year here. So we lose Sean Payton, and in two seasons, we're right back where we were. Well, I'm assuming this front office is going to say this is progress. We haven't heard anything yet as of this video. This is a Tuesday after the final regular season weekend. And uh, no words yet. We are all to assume that we're going to retain Dennis Allen and he's more than likely going to retain his entire defensive staff. We're kind of hoping that the offensive staff might be addressed <laughs> and we'll see. So, you know, there's still a question. I think for the majority of this season, we felt like no matter how the season ended, we would have to do something different with our offensive of coaching staff, with our offense in general. But the Saints do finish winning four out of their last five games, and the offense turned it around quite a bit. And uh, we're just going to have to wait and see whether this franchise loses, <laughs> loses their offensive coaching staff or retains them and, and says, hey, hey, we see progress. Well, yeah, I was kind of hoping for a different head coach, not to mention a different offense. So uh, let's talk about the season. You know, I'm going to I'm going to do several videos on this channel in the offseason, lots of videos to look forward to. I'll be doing one talking about the best players on the team, looking at the final stats and figuring out who was the MVP and stuff like that. So that's a video to look forward to. And we're also going to do a ton of videos on this channel talking about the draft. We will examine the quarterbacks in the draft and figure out whether we should be drafting one or not. We're going to be looking at the Saints draft. We're picking 14th overall. And we'll be discussing the top players on the board when the Saints pick at number 14. And we'll, we'll have a video talking about which direction the, sh the Saints should go as far as that number one draft pick is concerned. And we're also going to be doing videos about the entire draft. We'll do plenty of mock drafts. And uh, we'll also be doing videos about any kind of changes in the coaching staff or the players. This video is a bit of a season review now that the whole thing is over. Let's look back 
I just, <laughs> I just awful, soon to be forgettable regular season, the 2023 New Orleans Saints. And there is the final results. Let's take a walk down memory lane, shall we? Not, but we will. And I'm a, I'm a fan, and I hope you guys can enjoy this. Oh, yeah, remember those days? First week of the season, we were 2-1 and one in preseason. We had beaten the world champion Chiefs, and we ended up going to San Diego when we thought they were going to be good, and we beat them. You know, the starters played for a little bit. Oh, we only saw Derek Carr one drive against the Chiefs, but it was a touchdown drive. We scored on the opening drive, and we didn't do that again until the last game of the year. Oh, and then in the third preseason game, we lost to the Texans. And, you know, that was a the Jake Hayner game. And I think we came away from that one thinking, well, you know, we thought our backups were pretty good. They couldn't stop C.J. Stroud from scoring. And we end up losing that preseason game. But overall, I think the, the feeling was, hey, we're 2-1 and one in preseason. The team was competitive. Jake Hayner doesn't look like he's going to turn out to be something special. But, you know, it's okay. Let's see what we do. So we start the regular season. We host the Titans. The defense plays an incredible game. Keeps the Titans out of the end zone. We kept Derrick Henry from running crazy on us. I think we held him to like 60 yards total. So all in all, the, the Saints win 16 to 15. The, the offense did just enough. <laughs> and coming out of that game, we felt like we have a really good defense. You know, we thought the Titans might be something back then. Then we go into week two. We travel to the Panthers for a Monday night game. And in front of the nation, we beat our division rival. Now, at the time, we weren't sure if the Panthers were going to be anything or not. Turns out they were the worst team in the league. But we win the game in prime time on the road, 20-17. to 17. Now, that's two games in a row we held teams to under 20 points. And we managed to find a way to win. So after two games or two and no, we're scrappy. Looks pretty good, especially the next week through three quarters when we're holding the Packers out of the end zone as well. And we go into the fourth quarter of that Packers game up 17 to nothing. So at this point, the defense has held all three teams to under 20 points. And the offense is scoring just enough to win. And then that dreaded fourth quarter happens against the Packers. For starters, uh, we had a punt return for a touchdown in that game. So the offense was struggling. We'd only managed 10 points on offense. But as long as the defense is shutting the Packers out, we're good. We get the punt return touchdown. We have a 17-0 lead. And... Uh, our defense hadn't allowed more than 17 points all year in a game, and we allow 18 points against the Packers in the fourth quarter. And that one quarter ruined it for the entire year. <laughs> we didn't know, but it really did. But it, but it, but it ruined even that progress because we were two and zero and feeling good. And then when the defense allows 18 points in one quarter, we're thinking, oops, well, <laughs> we allowed the most points we have, we've allowed all year in one quarter instead of one game, one quarter. And then uh, you look at the offense and go, well, you know, if the defense is going to screw up and allow 18 points, the offense can't even score that. So maybe we're in trouble. Didn't feel good. Derek Carr had gotten hurt. Defense laid an egg. And the next game's against a division rival. 
we're at home against the Bucks, and we get absolutely stomped, 26 to 9. That gives us two losses on the year, and at that point, it's we're feeling pretty bad. You know, you, the Bucks won a division the year before. They weren't supposed to be very good this year. We put Derek Carr out there, hurt, and we only managed nine points. I think at the end of that game, we realized, you know, a lot of people were saying Jameis should have started that game at quarterback because Derek Carr was coming off the injury. But we ran with Carr, and we only scored nine points. Then the defense, it seemed like, because the offense was set up to fail so miserably that the defense didn't even try. That's what it felt like. It felt like, well, if the coaching staff is going to make this decision and put an injured quarterback out there and give our offense no chance to score, then uh, the defense is fighting an uphill battle. And, uh, you know, they had a tough day that day. So at that point, we're 2-2, two and two, and we're not feeling good about anything, especially the offense. There, there are things that the defense is capable of, but you, but, you, but you allow over 20 points for the first time all year. That was the first time we allowed 20 points in, I think, eight or nine games in a row dating back to the season before. So it was kind of like, no, nope, the defense isn't going to win this for you every time by holding a team to under 20 points. And even when they do, like against the Packers, your offense ain't good enough to, to win it anyway. Now your defense is allowing over 20 points. So you know your offense ain't good enough. But then we go to New England, and Dennis Allen somehow manages to outcoach Bill Belichick. And even though the Patriots were god-awful at the time and were pretty awful for the rest of the year, it still felt like a pretty good win because I'm doubting the coaching because of the decision to go with Derek Carr, because of the way you got your butts kicked by your division rival Bucks. And it, it feels like, well, with the Patriot game, they maybe they're turning it around. Defense scores a touchdown. Offense manages 27 points on its own. The defense shuts the Patriots out. I think they only crossed the 50-yard line once. And it was a completely dominant game, 34-0. And we're winners again at 3-2. and two. But there's still that part of you thinking, well, we put it all together for one game. Can we get a two-game winning streak? Can the offense perform like this for more than one week? And in the next week, we got a big resounding no. No. As we lose to the Texans in the Dome, final score 20-13. to 13. So the defense, hey, we allow 20 points or less, which is great. But, but once again, the offense can't do anything. We score 13 points. I think we went 0 for 5 in the red zone in that game. Turning the ball over, all kinds of junk. That was ugly. That puts us at a 3 and 3. And at that point, you know, the Texans were showing some signs of life, but you felt like even though the coaching staff was to be admired. You're still going up against a rookie in C.J. Stroud. And uh, and your defense holds them to 20 points, but your offense ain't good enough to, to be, beat anybody. So that, that that's how it feels. So at this point, the offense has scored over 20 points only once. And uh, we managed 20 against the Panthers. And at this point, we know the Panthers are the worst team in the league. I mean, nothing feels good. You go into the next week, another game in the Dome. And you've already, this will be your fourth game in the Dome. And you've already lost two. And in, this is a Thursday night game against the Jaguars. And you're in the Dome and it's prime time. And you've got Trevor Lawrence with a banged up knee. And you go out there and you look like garbage. You lose the game 31-24. It didn't feel that close. The Saints did claw back into it and had a chance to tie the game at the end. 
Foster Morrow drops the catch on crucial catch night. And the man who made the ultimate crucial catch couldn't make the crucial catch in the game. We lose 31 to 24. And at that point, it feels like you can beat bad teams, but you can't beat good teams. Now you're three and four. You've lost three of three out of four games in the dome. And yeah, even though you're catching all of these breaks, you're not uh you're not taking advantage of it. We go to on the road to play Indianapolis. And that's our best game of the year from the offense. We scored 38 points. It seemed like we could do no wrong. The Colts had this backup cornerback out there, and every time we threw at him, he gave up the completion. And yeah, there's Nothing better for a get-right game than to have a a cornerback who's playing very poorly. Probably the worst cornerback (laughs) performance of the year. The Saints take advantage of it. We win 38-27, but he didn't have their starting – the Colts didn't have their starting quarterback. Although he was a rookie, Richardson would have been a pain in the neck because he'd have been running around. We were going after Minshew. It seems like we beat Minshew anytime we play him. We beat him again this time. However, the defense allowed 27 points. Now, at this point, you've allowed 20 to the Texans, 31 to the Jaguars, and now 27 to the Colts. That's three games in a row where you're allowing 20 or more points, and this is supposed to be a defense that's allowing fewer than 20 points a game. Yeah, so at this point, you've played eight games and you've allowed 20 or more points in four of them. That's the point where I'm thinking, well, you know, even when the offense manages to get a break and score 38 points, you still got a defense allowing all of this. They shouldn't be. Can we please put it all together? We win another game. And in the dome, we play the Bears. We get the backup quarterback. Tyson Bajant. And we win the game 24-17. Of course, nobody feels good about this win because although the Saints force five turnovers, we can only score 24 points. We can only win by seven points. And I say, hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You found a way to win. That's the only way you were going to win is by forcing five turnovers. And you do. And you win a game in the Dome. And you win your second game in a row. And this is your first two-game winning streak since the beginning of the year. You got one more game to go before the bye week. You are 5-4, and four, and this is the point. You can go into that bye week 6-4, and four, having a two-game winning streak, a three-game winning streak, which you haven't done since the year before, and you'd be a winner by plus two game so you'd be set up in the conference you'd be set up in the division and you can also prove yourself because at the time the Vikings were competitive they were without their quarterback who was playing great at the time you're going to be playing a guy that just got on the Vikings roster the week before and he's a running quarterback and you struggle against that you also struggle against the Vikings no matter how when or how or where you play him. And I think that was the that was the game that showed you exactly who this team is. You're not good enough to beat the best teams, even when they're limping around with a backup quarterback. The defense is not going to play consistent enough. They allow 21 points in the first quarter or the first half against the Vikings. Final score is 27 and 19. And uh Yeah, you were getting your tail whipped. Then Derek Carr got hurt. Jameis Winston out there and went out there and got two touchdowns real quick and ended up throwing two interceptions real quick. And you go into the bye week as a loser to the Vikings and you're five and five on the year. And I mean, that is exactly what this team is. 
what they stayed. <laughs> you were an average team. You could beat the bad teams, but you were going to lose to the good teams, no matter what the benefit, no matter what the, the extra. You were going to find a way to lose. Defense was going to allow more than 20 points, and your offense wasn't going to score more than 20 points. That Vikings game right there told me everything I needed to know. We're good. When we play our best, we can we can compete. But we're we're just we're just our week to week game output is average. We go in the bye week feeling pretty bad. You know, Carr got hurt again in that loss to the Vikings, and you know we had to a bye week, so we had two weeks for him to be, to get ready, and and he he gets ready. I think he had to pass concussion concussion protocol and stuff like that. We lost several starters in that loss to the Vikings, including I think Michael Thomas. So you come out of the bye week. You're going to play the Falcons. You're five and five. This is a chance to, you're still in first place in the division. This is a chance to take control of the division and you lose 24 to 15. Your offense once again looks awful. And once again, Derek Carr coming off of an injury looks awful. It doesn't look good enough. The offense doesn't look good enough. Your defense allowed 200, almost 230 yards rushing. And in the next week, at home, you play the Lions. The Lions are the best team you're going to face all year. And they whip your butt. You manage to come back. In the end, you're, you only lose by five points. And you have a chance at the end. You have the ball down by five. And, of course, you know, our offensive play caller, doesn't do what needs to be done. He doesn't bring in Taysom Hill, even though there's <laughs> we're at midfield. We've got four minutes to go. We're down by five. We've got plenty of time. We've got timeouts. You can run the best plays you can run. You were told by the Lions, don't play Taysom Hill because he's going to eat us up. Taysom Hill is having a decent day, but no, no Taysom Hill. You put it on the shoulders of your quarterback again, who was, you know, Hadn't been playing good all year. Yeah, and you lose. You lose another one in embarrassing fashion to another team that's better than you are. That makes three losses in a row, and the bye week was sandwiched in between all of that. So for that four-week period, you're feeling nothing but misery from this team. You go from five and five But we're five and eight. No, five and seven at that point. Five and seven. You drop to five and seven. That damn loss to the Vikings. If you would have been six and four instead of five and five. And of course, everything goes back to that Packers game when it was all said and done. And I really feel like that loss to the Texans was awful. Because you're, you're in the red zone. And you can't do anything. Your field goal kicker's missing kicks. You're turning the ball over. You're getting penalties. That three-game losing streak with the bye week sandwiched in between was really what ruined this season. As far as a fan, as far as feeling like, are we good enough to win? That really told me, no, we're not. Despite all of the struggles in the beginning, and really that Packers game, you you hold on to win that game, and and there's there's you know there's a lot of good to take from it, even though the defense allows 18 points. If the field goal kicker makes the kick and you win the game, you feel like you just had a bad quarter and that's it. But you're still winners, but. No, it all went south. The coaching decision to play Carr in week four is what gave you that loss to the Bucks, in my opinion. And in an awful, awful red zone offense against 
Houston, which establishes how bad your coaches are going to be. So winning four out of the last five games, we're, we should be feeling great about it. And you know, looking at the offensive numbers, you know, you score 28 against the Lions in that loss, and then, you know, you score 22 or more points the rest of the season. The defense holds every team in the last five games to 17 points or fewer, except for that Rams game. And yeah, you win four out of five, but the one you lose is to the Rams on Thursday night. The Rams are the only really good team, really good team out of those five games. And uh, yeah, you're down 30 to seven and claw back in, lose 30 to 22. But, you know, the final two games, the Bucks are in it. They're, they, they've, they've got a winning record and they're going to the playoffs as the division champ so I guess beating the Bucks was okay especially since they had whipped you the first time and then the Falcons finished 7 and 10 they've beaten you the first time so it's nice to whip them and you should whip a team that finishes 7 and 10 but uh but we know that that's difficult to do so if you if you if you get some help and you squeeze into the playoffs after this you know, this final, these final two victories, really. Plus your best offensive performance of the year. Your defense playing great. If you manage to squeeze into the playoffs, maybe you could make a, a fuss in the playoffs. Maybe you could beat the Eagles who have been struggling. And you can get to a divisional round. But you needed help. You needed help because your team just wasn't very good. It wasn't good when it needed to be. It wasn't consistent. The defense allowed 20 or fewer points in 10 games out of the 17 games, and we went 8-2 and two in those games, the two games we lost, where the defense allowed 20 or fewer points were Green Bay and the Texans, and that to me, is where you proved you weren't good enough, and then that was where the season was lost, ultimately. You're 8-2 and two in games where the defense allows 20 or fewer points, and the two losses, that's where, that's, that's, that would have changed everything. On offense, you score 20 or more points in 11 games. And you actually go eight and three in those games. But the three games you lost, those 20 or more points were garbage time against the Jaguars, the Lions, and the Rams. You had a chance. You had a chance against the Jaguars. The ball comes off his hands. That would have tied the game. You had a chance against the Lions. You're only you're down by five with four minutes to go. And you're putting it all on the back of the quarterback, Derek Carr. And then in the against the Rams, you know. Too little, too late. Uh probably the worst game by the defense. Definitely the worst game by the defense. You allowed 33 points against the Lions, but uh, everybody felt like the Lions were great. You know, the Rams had turned it around. They're playing pretty good football now, and going into the playoffs, they're, they're a pretty good team. But I had the Saints marked as losing that game to the Rams from the beginning of the season, regardless of who's going to play. That's a bad spot. Thursday night football all the way on the other side of the country, and Playing a team that hot, a team that you struggle against a lot. You managed to beat them last year, but not this year. Yeah, there you go. That's the schedule. I thought it would be fun to go down memory lane where it all went wrong for this team. It all went wrong because the head coach did not address 
what needed to be addressed soon enough. When, it, when we finally did start practicing red zone offense more, we started performing better in the red zone. When the offensive coordinator finally decided to use motion and play action pass, we started winning more. When we started utilizing our best players in the red zone instead of putting it on cars, shoulders all the time, we started to perform better. So overall, with this coaching staff, if I want to look at the glasses half full, I would say that we did some we did some good things on defense. We we struggled with injuries on the offensive line, and uh, but ultimately we scraped together a pretty decent offensive line toward the end. There gave Carr a lot more time. We finished the season as, as one of the, uh, as allowing the, f we are one of the best at al not allowing sacks. How am I supposed to say this? <laughs> when it's all said and done, I think the Saints are in second place or third place, fewer, fewer sacks allowed. And that's, that's wild when you think about how we, I think we allowed 11 sacks in the first three games. Yeah, we had turned it around pretty good on on offense, as far as the offensive line goes, as far as red zone goes, as far as yards per pass, as far as the wide receivers getting on page with Derek Carr, the tight ends got involved. Even though the running game was pretty bad all year long, but that was kind of going for the last few games. So the offense literally did turn around. The play calling got better. The quarterback got better. You know, by the end of it, we score 48 points against the Falcons, and we don't have arguably our three best players in Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, and Marshall and Lattimore. We go in there without Ryan Ramchek, without our backup, and Landon Young, so we've got you know, a guy that we pulled off the street this year, and yeah, he was, he's a good veteran player, should have been on our roster the whole time. Uh, but it's but it's patchwork with Andres Pete at left tackle and James Hurst at left guard, and, you know, we, we managed to do okay. We scraped together a pretty good team in the end, but it took too long to get there. We fall one game short of the playoffs. So, my season in review. Could have just won one more game. If we were 10-7, and seven, we'd be in the playoffs. We wouldn't have had to watch other teams win when we wanted them to lose. It would have been a much better situation. I wish we were getting rid of Dennis Allen. But I don't think we are. So overall, nine and eight, missed the playoffs, not good enough. Dennis Allen should be fired. We should be turning this franchise around. We should be cutting some of the dead wood. We should be eating the salary cap hit if it has to happen. And uh, we should seriously be thinking about trying to acquire extra draft picks trying to get a young team, a cheap team, <laughs> a reboot. And, and, and it wouldn't be a, a, a over a, a overhaul from, from, the, from the very bottom, but it'll be the worst we've ever been. You, you eat these salaries, you end up trading some of these players, whatever you got to do, and you end up in salary cap Hades for a while. And uh, yeah. I think a team that's struggling through through a, a change like this, you know, you can expect a losing record. We were losers last year, and the year before that, and this year, we're nine and eight. So we're struggling anyway. Should we get a quarterback in the draft? Should we plan on getting rid of Carr, even though he'll probably be our starter next year? 
Should we plan for the future? Well, I'm going to be doing videos about all of that. We're going to do a video about whether we should draft a quarterback or not. We're going to do a video about Jaden Daniels and what would you pay to have the chance to draft him. And we'll also be looking at the draft, and we are picking 14th overall, so we're going to look at who is most likely going to be on the board at that time and the different moves we can make to address that pick. And, of course, we'll be doing more draft videos. So subscribe to Rosenfield 10 for more videos like this. I'm Joe. And even though the regular season is over, Saints coverage will never be over for this channel. So stay tuned, and until the next one, I will talk to you later. Who dat?